Hello everybody, my name is V. Narendra Kumar and we are from NRK Academy and in the series of great books, great books by classic authors, great authors, we have today <clears throat> a short history of the world and today we'll be having the first uh, chapter in this video and every video will have one chapter, there are around 60 plus chapters. So we'll be completing this book and this book is a short history of the world. Now obviously every author will have his own slant when he's writing a book but because he's holistic, he's deep, he's a human being and he's got his own style of expression, it's very much a literary work. So we will be seeing this or reading out this book as a profound deep literary work from which we can take whatever we want and I will leave it to the reader to take whatever beauty insights he wants from it and what I will be doing is I'll be reading out um, as if the author is speaking and I'll read out as best as I can. So let's start A Short History of the World by H. G. Wells, the great literary giant. The first chapter is the world, the world in space. So H. G. Wells starts right from the beginning, before, much before the human species came, the world in space. The story of our world is a story that is still very imperfectly known. A couple of hundred years ago, men possessed the history of little more than the last 3000 years. What happened before that time was a matter of legend and speculation. Over a large part of the civilized world, it was believed and taught that the world had been created suddenly in 4004 BC, though authorities differed as to whether this had occurred in the spring or autumn of that year. This fantastically precise misconception, wrong thing, was based upon a too literal interpretation of the Hebrew, Hebrew Bible and upon rather arbitrary theological assumptions connected therewith. Such ideas have long since been abandoned by religious teachers and it is universally recognized that the universe in which we live has to all appearances existed for an enormous period of time and possibly, possibly for endless time. Of course, there may be deception in these appearances as the room may be made to seem endless by putting mirrors facing each other at either end but that the universe in which we live has only existed only for six or seven thousand years may be regarded as an altogether exploded idea. <clears throat> the earth as everybody knows nowadays is a spheroid, a sphere, slightly compressed, orange fashion with a diameter, uh, with a diameter of nearly eight thousand miles. Its spherical shape has been known at least to a limited number of intelligent people for nearly 2500 years but before that time it was supposed to be flat and various ideas which now seem fantastic were entertained about its relations to the sky and the stars and planets. We know now that it ro rotates upon its <coughs> axis which is about 24 miles shorter, shorter than its equatorial diameter. The axis is 24 miles shorter than its equatorial diameter every 24 hours and that this is the cause of the alternations of day and night and that it circles about the sun in a slightly distorted and slowly variable, slightly distorted and slowly variable oval path in a year. Its distance from the sun varies between 91 and a half millions, 91 and a half millions at its nearest and 94 and a half million miles, million miles, 10 hundred thousand. About the earth circles a smaller sphere, the moon, at an average distance of 239. 
39,000 miles, 2.39 lakh miles. Earth and Moon are not only the only bodies to travel around the Sun. To travel around the Sun, there are also the planets Mercury and Venus at distances of 36 and 67 millions of miles. 36 and 67 million of miles and beyond the circle of the earth and disregarding a belt of numerous small bodies the planetoids there are Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune at mean distances of 144, 483, 886, 1782 and 1793 millions of miles respectively. These figures in millions of miles are very difficult for the mind to grasp. It may help the reader's imagination if we reduce the sun and planets to a smaller, more conceivable scale. If then we represent our earth as a little ball, earth as a little ball of one inch diameter, one inch diameter, the sun would be a big globe nine feet across, nine feet across and 323 yards away. Nine feet across and 323 yards away, that is about a fifth of a mile. That's the how far it will be if Earth is an orange. Four or five minutes worth walking. The moon would be a small pea, <laughs> pea, two feet and a half from the world. Between Earth and Sun, there would be the two inner planets, Mercury and Venus at distances of 125 and 250 yards from the Sun. All round and about these bodies, there would be emptiness until you came to Mars, 175 feet beyond the Earth. Jupiter nearly a mile away, a foot in diameter. Saturn a little smaller, two miles off, Uranus four miles off and Neptune six miles off then nothingness and nothingness except for small particles and drifting scraps of attenuated vapor for thousands of miles. If you take Earth as an orange, he's saying, the nearest star to Earth on this scale would be 40,000 miles away. These figures will serve perhaps to give one some conception of the immense emptiness of space in which the drama of life goes on. For in all this enormous vacancy of space, we know certainly of life only upon the surface of our Earth. It does not penetrate much more than three miles down into the 4,000 miles that separate us from the center of our globe and it does not reach more than five miles above its surface. Apparently, all the limitlessness of space is otherwise empty and dead. The deepest ocean dredgings go down to 5 miles. The highest recorded flight of an airplane, aeroplane is little more than 4 miles. Men have reached to 7 miles up in balloons, but at a cost of great suffering. No bird can fly so high as 5 miles and small birds and insects which have been carried up by aeroplanes drop off insensible far below that level. And that completes our first uh, chapter of the short history of the world we'd like to remind the listeners that this is a classic book it was written much before today much before 2022 in which it's being recorded right now thank you so much this is narendra kumar and we are from nrk academy